Want to start saving money and energy at home? Eversource, proud sponsor of Energize Connecticut, is here to help with our in-home energy service. For just $50, our certified technicians will give you a unique home energy score and conduct on-the-spot services. Plus, you'll get rebates and incentives on efficiency upgrades, like improved insulation to stay comfortable and save money all year round. So don't wait. Go to Eversource.com to get started today. Paid for by a charge on customer energy bills. This is MuggleCast, episode lucky number 7, for September 18th, 2005. If you haven't finished reading book 6 yet, then you probably should not listen to this podcast, as we do talk about several different spoilers. Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's show. I am your host, Ben Shane. I'm Andrew Seebs. I'm Eric Skull. And joining this with us this week from the Leaky Cauldron is Melissa and Ellie, the head webmaster lady, Chicky, over there. Hello. And John Noe. He doesn't know much. Yeah. Hey, you guys got your own podcast, Leo Fars. This is a regular really, podcast. We, we've been We're... invaded. We've been invaded this week. We're invading into okay. your No, actually. This is why we do yeah. it. This is why we did it, so that we can get onto MuggleCast. This is a hostile Definitely, takeover. because <laughs> if we check the <laughs> iTunes music store, who's, who, who's Don't trumping? Do that Let's again. do that, shall we? Who's trumping who? No. Let me see here. No, but the real reason, yeah, but the so real reason they're on is because we just taped the special edition five minutes ago. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. This is like two days later. That's a lie. We can't tell them that we did that, though. But we tape. But we when we did the special edition, Ben wasn't on it, and I just I couldn't get through a week exactly. without having a nice chat with Ben, okay, so I guys. had to make sure. Well, in light of all that, let's go to Micah for this week's news. Thanks, Ben. Let's see. Do we have any news here? Portuguese book release, October 16th. The trailer. What? The trailer. Oh, yeah. The second Goblet of Fire movie trailer was released on Thursday. You can head over to AOL Movie Phone, who now has a high-resolution full-screen preview, or download it from MuggleNet.com. We also have the Good Morning TV aired Goblet of Fire trailer now available. As previously mentioned, the new trailer will make its debut with Corpse Bride in all theaters on September 23rd. Speaking of Goblet of Fire, Patrick Doyle has finished recording the score for the fourth Harry Potter film, the final pieces having been done in conjunction with the London Symphony Orchestra. You can head over to MuggleNet for all videos, pictures, and the latest trailer news. You can also listen to or read the brand new MuggleCast Pottercast second special edition podcast where the crew analyzes the new trailer in detail. And in other news, keeping you posted on a topic reported last week, on Monday, JKR updated the news section of her site to talk about the ongoing situation with eBay. She said, eBay has responded to this news item in the press. On the one hand, they have said that they rely on consumers to police their site. On the other, a spokesman called Hani Dursey says that it is the responsibility of the copyright owner to report any listings that violates their rights. She responded by saying eBay might be interested to learn that most Harry Potter fans are children whose ability to verify the authenticity of signatures is not to be entirely trusted. We have previously reminded visitors not to purchase off of eBay. The crew talks about this in the upcoming episode. That's all the news from our news center in New York for the September 18th, 2005 edition of MuggleCast. Back to you guys. Okay, thanks, Micah, for that wonderful insight on this past week's news. Well, one of the topics you may have heard him bring up, probably the most, like, the major topic of the past week was the Goblet of Fire trailer that was released, and I know you guys cover, covered your special edition, hey, but in case all those leaky haters out there decided not to listen to it, <laughs> I guess we'll, guess we'll <laughs> cover it again for MuggleCast. So, guys, yeah, Very so, briefly. I the saw the electrical trailer for I Harry saw the trailer Potter like everyone else. Potter. Anybody who's anybody saw the trailer. And I don't know why I said that, but we'll keep going. Um, <laughs> I thought I thought it was actually pretty decent and I don't know, I just liked it when Dumbledore did the Harry Potter part, you know, and he He's such a feisty Dumbledore this time. Yeah, around. we really talked I about him. We, he needs we, we need a subtle kind of Dumbledore for especially for Order of the Phoenix when he sits da- Harry down and tells him all that crap about it. This past, you can't be like, <laughs> when you were young, I thought that I yeah, shouldn't I tell you. <laughs> but I was wrong, Harry. You know, 
Okay, and do you guys have any idea what's up with that part with Sirius's face and the fire and like the snake coming out of the wall? <laughs> yeah, that's well, that's from the beginning. You... No, he oh, says the snake that... coming out of the wall. We got the snake coming out of the wall is at the is at the Riddle House, right. and that is Barty Crouch. Um, Everyone knows that. Wait. Yeah, but Frank Price's says perspective. There are oh, demons in the second. walls. Whoa. What's what's the, what's with the fireplace? Why why is he talking to the fireplace? And then then exactly. the snake coming out of the wall. Well, it's not <laughs> out of the, the wall. Oh, the these fireplace. are like these are like different scenes. Okay. Oh well, that that was that was terrible. I don't know. I didn't like it. I thought I was kind of confused by it, and I was, I was upset. I think he melted. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we don't need to go That's into so the trial nice. again. Cause Let's we just not get into it. this. Yeah. <laughs> into the special okay. edition. That's obvious. Okay. <laughs> Probably They're, not. Even I knew that. But it's podcasting. We could do whatever we want. Okay. Well, before we move, before we move on to our next news item thingamajigger, I have a top thirteen list that I'd like to read to you guys, which I thought was kind of humorous. Maybe we'll like make our own little section out of you know, kind of like David Letterman has the top ten. We'll have our top thirteen, and we'll have like people come on and read it and stuff. And I don't know, that maybe end up being a lame idea, but Go this on, list ben. sounds pretty cool. Okay, the top thirteen reasons you know you listen to MuggleCast when dot 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 dot. This was submitted to us by Hannah, from age 16 years, from California. Thanks, Hannah. <laughs> Number 13. You have quotes in your locker that say things like, Potter Army, or just speculation, guys. Number 12. <laughs> you wish you were in the front row of Mr. Nelson's class. Number 11. Oh. You laugh whenever someone says, Yeah, man, I can because it reminds you of Jamie. <laughs> That's Aww. a good one. Ten, your siblings give you weird looks when you listen to your iPod because they don't understand how Harry Potter discussions can be funny or why you would listen to them in the first place. Number nine, you know there is no such thing as overanalyzing. <laughs> Number eight, you'd rather meet Ben, Andrew, Kevin, Eric, and Jamie than J.K. Rowling herself. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Aww. Seven. Aww. You've fallen in love with Ben and I thought they were going to say the Emerson. And Jamie's voices. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. Number six. You talk about. Hey, I got that one. If you're really in the conversation. That's on my list. <laughs> and number five. I was talking to Ben the other day, and he said <laughs> he completely five, agreed with you me. You stare at Ben, Andrew, Eric, Kevin, and Jamie's picture on the About Us page and wonder what <laughs> they look like in real life. Whoa, I'm glad I just updated that. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> That I don't one know. Count. Well, like, doesn't guess, like, that show you what they look like in real life? Isn't that sort number of the point four, of the Number pictures? four, this is my favorite on the list. You're an Emerson and Melissa shipper. <laughs> you don't have to listen to Mugger <laughs> Cast to do that. that. So... <laughs> okay, forget what I just said. Anyway, <laughs> number, <laughs> number three. You check to see who posted what on so Mugglenet's main page because you know these people now. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> number That's really two. cool. You've heard Jamie's British joke of the day. Which, by the way, <laughs> in his absence this oh, week, oh, he's geez. probably off studying for exams or something. Man. Yeah, man. Well, in his absence this week, um, next week we're going to have two British jokes of the day. Like, I have a double, double, double serving there. So, yeah. Stay tuned. Oh, man. Stay tuned, people. And the number one reason you Too know much, you can't take it. Cast. Drum roll, please. <laughs> you think of Ben, <laughs> Andrew, Kevin, and Eric... Oh, Eric, Jamie. Dang it, I messed that up really bad. <laughs> you, think, you think of Ben, Andrew, Kevin, Eric, and Jamie as your friends. So yeah, Aww. I thought that list was pretty Aww. creative. And it was I really love you all. Again. This is Hannah. That's great. Thank you, I Hannah, for you, sending Hannah. that in. We love you, Hannah. I love you. Hannah, that's really cool. I'm touched. Aww. Okay. John, where's your so list? Moving on. Oh, I could I could think of a list. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sure I could you think can. of many lists. Okay, there's something else I want to talk about, guys, list. is like the whole J.K. Rowling eBay war that's going on. You know, wait, like... wait, 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 wait. First, I have two announcements. Jeez, okay. Andrew's suffering from a cold, so please. Yeah, pardon uh, his nasal noise. number one. Noise. I'm ill. If anyone would like to send me tissues and or money for tissues, because I'm running through. Dude, a you're box gonna get like a hundred boxes of tissues. <laughs> You're actually First gonna all, get FedEx tissues. We we guys we have to admit a mistake. We made a uh -oh. mistake. Oh come on, actually, not ben no not Eric the not the mistake. defense against the dark arts. Yeah, yes. we, we come made a on. big mistake. Slughorn 
is got, not the defense gonna... against the dark arts teacher. We've got about oh, 65 million oh. bazillion emails saying, yeah. hey, you okay. guys are wrong. Slug all right, I'm going to go all out. All right, that was my fault. I'll, I, it fit in context. You know, we all kind of knew that he was experienced in those areas, even yeah. though he was the potion teacher. So it fit, right. but I'm sorry if I, you know, I, I do know what I'm talking about most of the time. So Also, we had another right. complaint, which was... Which was, <laughs> where was Spy on Sports last week? Well, well we actually did honesty, record it. Hey, hey, honesty. I'm talking. I'm talking. Ooh, get off my show. We called Dylan. We, we, we called. We actually did did a Spy on Sports last week. We did it over the phone because Everson wasn't online. So we tried calling and then the audio file that we recorded got all messed up. So, so we did All we did that right now. Ben, Speaking of do the honors. Speaking of spy on Sparts, are we calling him? Let's no. call him. Speaking no. of spy on Sparts, let's see. Emerson is online right now. Ask and him what he's doing. Yeah, I'll ask him what he's doing. What What's are the screen you name doing, again? A Sims eighty nine. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Should be interesting to see how many A Sims. Oh, poor Andrew. Is getting all nervous. Why am I getting nervous again? Because we're talking to Emerson, and it just gets you. Yes, guys. Are starting the wobble right now. <laughs> yeah. He's sitting down, so that shouldn't matter much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So while we wait an hour for every Sorry, if, if my voice gets shaky. on to the first topic. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got some. We got a response from Emerson. Ooh, Emerson, apparently he's studying and he's partying at the same time. He's party studying. <laughs> <Emerson>. <laughs> study partying. <laughs> studying Whoa. parties. What did he exactly say? I think that's a really cool kid study. Is that's he studying how to party? Really he's study. studying something. Oh. Yeah, and, I don't and want to so, know. What okay. Also, Emerson's been having a bit of trouble with calculus, so if anybody wants to stop by, tutor him. Anybody, bit. tutor Emerson. That's yeah, what we're going to do. Go, go to Notre Dame, you know, just, you know, to look for him. He's probably having dinner at South or North around 5.30 p.m. each evening. And then cereal right afterwards. Yeah, then cereal. Then cereal. And yeah, so I wow, think guys. that concludes You're very familiar this with the week's schedule. edition of Spy on Sports. <laughs> you scared we'll me. see Main you topic. next week. <laughs> Andrew, go. Okay, Ben. Hit us with the main topic. Okay, well, since you guys pretty much covered the trailer, and if you want to hear more about that, just make your way over to the special edition of, X2. what do you guys call it, Muggle Leaky Potter. Muggle Leaky Potter cast X2, whatever. Zero. Yeah, so. Something. What did we call it? We did, yeah, something. <laughs> Muggle yeah, Morphine, so something. If you, want to, if you want to hear more about that, go ahead and download it. But otherwise, um, the main topic for this week looks like it's going to be some of you might be bored by this, but I think it's actually quite interesting. We'll delve into it more. But it's the latest on the eBay and J.K. Rowling dispute. eBay has, post has responded to the post that J.K. Rowling made on her official website, which warned Potter fans of the fake signed copies of the books. She said for about every one real authentic signed copy, there are six to ten fakes. And so, yeah, eBay pretty much thinks this is a slap in the face and that J.K. Rowling is pretty much laying down the law. Well, you guys are knowledgeable Harry Potterites. What do you think? Except for John. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> what about you, Andrew? Well, what do you think? Well, basically, okay. I don't know what to think. I almost hope this goes on for a little bit longer. Like a little bis dispute between J.K.R. and eBay. Although I think J.K. Rowling's a little bit more mature to not go back and forth with them about this. Well, what I think I she's think... really upset about is that you know, eBay sold the Dumbledore toast without her permission, and then it was just... The no, I think it was... was all, all downhill, all downhill from there. Yeah, dude, JKR I, I is more concerned that. about the fans, I think, than she is about eBay. I don't think she really hates eBay, and I don't think she was going against them. She's just warning fans that that's a medium that people are particularly fond of to rip people off. Well, and it does sound like she has tried every every avenue she can. I mean, her her signature. Everybody keeps telling us she should just Vero her signature. Her signature is Vero'd. But the 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 problem is that for somebody who has as many fakes online a, as she does, she would need to hire somebody full time to report the the criminal activity of others about her signature to take take advantage of the Vero service. It's just it's not right. She shouldn't have to. In a way, this is eBay's fault though, because. They they do have security measures in place to prevent fraud fraudulent items appearing on eBay, and I guess they have no real way of telling if it's fake or not. But there right. are context clues in the listings, like based on feedback. Well, like if someone with abuse. one positive it's... feedback has a posting, it says 
Hi, here's my side JK Rowling book. Free shipping. And that's yeah. it. You know. <laughs> yeah, you don't send it. I think that's what most of them are, right? <laughs> Wait, well, like, yeah, a couple of them are cover reporters' books, actually. Well, that from I the could Edinburgh say. thing. But did she sign mostly like bookmarks or something there? Yeah, there were the the tickets look like bookmarks. Guys, I kind of fell out of the okay, loop. What, what does Vero mean? I'm sorry. It's there. It's there. So you can verify your signature. Oh. Um, and then that's a way that you can you can then quickly report an item as fraudulent. Oh, I see. But the point is that you have to report it. It's not preventative. It's, it has to it has to exist on the site first, and then you have to report it. And they've tried this many times. Her whole team has over the, over okay, you know see. however so long they've been doing this. Why do you have to use this. a fancy word to describe it? Trying trying to put your trying to put yourself they, above the, word. the They're not call it... Are you trying to put yourself above the muggle casters by using Ben? Big you're words? just upset because she wouldn't go out with you. Ben, you're being mean to me. Be... You're just ben upset because she wouldn't go out with you. She was out oh, with John. Oh, be last quiet! Time. Oh, don't even. Well, no, kind of, kind of along the same lines as uh, eBay bought out Skype now. So, do you think people will be able to... for like a eight billion dollars? Yeah. So, do you think that they could now like talk to other eBay people now that we could talk to the people where? Uh, well, the, the that's the, the purpose of eBay buying Skype. eBay bought Skype to improve their communication, communication between seller and buyers. In a way, I, I think that's great. It's an easy so, way for people to do it. So out of curiosity, if, if we Smart. slam eBay, could they get us thrown off Skype? Could they, like, ban <laughs> our names? I think they're yeah, listening probably. to us right now. Probably not. Ooh. I don't know. We said probably not, and then we turned up an Apple, so go figure. I, I, know, it's, I know what's going on. Okay, eBay is having this whole Potter dispute, and they heard about MuggleCast and PotterCast and the joint podcast, and they said, I'm going to buy it, and I'm just going to close them down. I don't know. That makes no sense. That's my theory. That is my theory. And then we all switched to Gizmo. It's a great plan, and then we're going to go to Google. Google Talk. Well, the problem with Google Talk is that they... No conferencing. No Mac. No no conferencing either. Yeah, no conferencing. Okay, last time check, this wasn't This Week in Tech, so... Back yeah. to Harry Potter <laughs> news. Um, <laughs> this is yeah. There. Okay, so so yeah, who's at fault the, here? Is it eBay? It's nobody's fault. Or should JK Rowling be working about this? They pulled it up and she said, "Hey, look, you're being f- frauded, and just watch out." You know, I don't think it's there's no right or wrong. You know, eBay took it personally and go, Melissa. Well, how about we like lay some blame on the people who are making the fraudulent items? Copies, yeah. yeah, it's there. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, if if anybody's oh, yeah. at fault here, it's them. You know, it's not eBay, it's not JKR, it's just the people who abuse this yeah. privilege. But eBay now knows eBay. what's going on. You can't play ignorance anymore. You yeah. know what's going on. Do something to stop it. Now you know that you're that that a large portion of your readers are you know being defrauded. Do something about it. Right, but eBay isn't is is not the only medium of like getting these bootleg right. items that aren't even real signatures. I mean, last time I heard Andrew was selling some out of his garage. So, yeah. He uh, that was But then he moved to, to his the backyard. Bed. Then he moved to his Andrew, backyard. Andrew. Yeah. That reminds me, let's talk after about that uh about that deal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you beat the, the deal. deal. <laughs> okay. The part where you okay. transpose Melissa, Melissa into the jewelry uh, to unload. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. And okay, I got well, some, I think that pretty well, much wraps up the whole eBay thingy. Let's go to voicemails. Topic. No, but before we go to voicemails, I'd like to just like tell you guys what's going on with this Potter fans for Katrina. Melissa can help me out here. On the right navigation bar on MuggleNet, you can see, or also on Leaky Cauldron, you can see a PayPal donate button where you can donate money to Potter fans for Katrina because these people, as George W. Bush was just on TV giving a speech about how the city needs to be able to rebuild, and they won't be able to rebuild unless they have the money do, to do so and resources, <laughs> which is why we are coming to you, and we're asking for you to open your hearts and to open your very wallets. Very nicely put. Melissa? That was very nicely put, Ben. Open your hearts, open your wallets. That was, that was, it was beautiful. was inspiring. Well, last time we checked in, we had about 5,000. Now we're up to about 6,000. The drive goes through September 20th. And we're looking for companies to match our donation. We have a couple of candidates, but if you think that you want your company to get involved, let us know. Potter for Katrina. That's Potter, F-O-R, Katrina at gmail.com. And we, we, the email and the response we've been getting from people in the area, from people um, who know people who are affected, it's been really touching. And so if you put the, put the button on your site, we will put your name in a list of people who, who, who took part, and we'll just thank a lot of you for all time. 
So yeah, so please do that if you haven't yet, because like like I said, they need all the money they can get. Last count, like the overall donations have been about five hundred million dollars, but when you have several billion dollars in damage, that doesn't go very far. So we need as much money as we can get to go to this area to help. The them city rebuild. is literally broke; they can't make their 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 payroll. So you know, this is a serious. It's a situation that affects the entire country. It's not. It's not just. It's not just Louisiana. So, get on it, guys. Oh, and exactly. I want to thank. Actually, put out a public thank you to um, HPNA because of all the. I guess, I guess large. I don't know what the distinction is or where the line is, but of, of the really large Harry Potter sites, um, that's the only other one who put up a link and put up the the the, the button. And I'm not afraid to yeah, call so everybody out thanks. on that. HPNA. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. HPNA. And all of HPNA. Com. Yes. HPNA.com, 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 HPNA.com. Okay, they're broken record. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, there's really no reason to not put up the button because, you know, these this is people's lives that we're talking about, so. You know why I like HPNA so much? Because they're such a fair news site. Like, they'll post anything that's going on between other sites. Like, they 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 plugged our MuggleCast and PotterCast. They plugged the Potter fans for Katrina. Look at that. They even have a big button and a PayPal button right there. Did anyone even ask him? So in short, Jeff, Guillaume, we love you. He's he's the webmaster. He's the cheese guy over there. I can't say his name. There. Oh. Can't pronounce that to save my life. But Jeff, cool guy. Jeff. Okay, well, um, I think that pretty much covers the whole Katrina stuff. Yeah, so... Is there any other announcements anyone has? Are we going to announce our marriage, Ben? Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> that, that was supposed to be secret, kind of like... Ben until you're legal. ...copies of Half-Blood Prince. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's bootleg copies of giving to local libraries. <laughs> oh, right. That's Harmless. even better. Robin Hooding of Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we move on to anything else, I want to give you guys a sneak peek at the brand new Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Lego sets due out in a few weeks. Here's my interview with one site that did get an early look. Okay, so we're joined by Joe Fulton of MillionairePlayboy.com, also known as Lando.Pimp. That's right. How you doing, Joe? Hey, how you guys doing? So we brought you on here today, or I brought you on here today, because you got a special sneak peek at the new Harry Potter, Lego, Goblet of Fire. That's sets. right. Uh, Lego sent them to me a few weeks ago. I got to put them together. Uh, took lots of pictures of them so that you can get some really good glimpses of how the sets are built. Uh, and you can check that out on MillionairePlayboy.com. On the front page there, underneath the features, you will see the links to the sets as well as I'm sure when this podcast goes live, uh, we'll have a link to that as to MuggleNet and to all the sets so you can check them out. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about MillionairePlayboy.com. What do you guys do on the site? Well, Millionaire Playboy is really an online magazine for collecting toys, comics, movies, sorted pop culture artifacts. Uh, we kind of cater to the, uh, the swinging bachelor kind of feel. That's what the website uh, is supposed to look like. And the name comes from, if you think about Bruce Wayne from Batman, he's the Millionaire Playboy, uh, you know, except... These days, uh, you know, I think in the new movie, they said he was billionaire playboy, so maybe we need to change your name. <laughs> all right, and so you – all right, so the, the article you have online on the site, billionaireplayboy.com, is an excellent article. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, it, it really is good. So tell us – first, start us off. Tell us about the Durmstrang ship. Well, the Durmstrang ship, and when I wrote the review a few weeks ago, we hadn't seen the new trailer. And surprisingly enough, an hour before we're talking now, I got to see the new Harry Potter trailer, which has a good shot of it. And compared to uh, the set, compared to the uh, the movie, it's dead on from what I can see. I mean, obviously, the color was a little off in the uh, movie phone uh, trailer, but uh, it looked pretty good. Uh, you know, as you know, every, all the Harry Potters, I'm sure I don't have to go into the history and what the Durmstrang ship is, because you guys probably know more about it than I do. Uh, but the ship, it, but it's a pretty decent set. Uh, there's lots of, like, little, uh, things, fun things that are about it. Uh, the main part of it is at the top is the cabin. 
Now, the cabin doesn't really open up unless you take it off of the ship, because if they made the cabin you know, the size that you could open up and fit little minifigures in, the ship would be three times the size of that, and then the cost would be about three times the size of that. But inside, you can have it has like a little bat, uh, book, goblets, maps, and all sorts of stuff, little fun things. But unfortunately, you have to take it off the ship to actually get into it. Uh, you know, underneath it, uh, under on the front of there is a, uh, you can have a little trap door where you can hide people. It's got a little uh, w walk the plank. And then it comes with two minifigures. It comes with uh, Professor Karkoff, if I said that right, and then uh, Victor Crumb. And uh, it's a nice set with the exception that, you know, it doesn't have anything really Hogwarts related. It, you know, you get the Victor Crumb minifigure, which is one of the Triwizard Champions. But uh, I would have loved to have seen some kind of dock where that they, you know, the ship would have docked at with a dumb welcoming Dumbledore. Maybe, you know, another minifigure character as well. Yeah. So, so would that be one of the weaknesses of the set? Not only maybe something else besides the dock, but that little cabin on the top that you have to detach in order to well, open up. Well, let's take it this it, it's you have to look at it two ways. You can either say, well, yeah, the cabin is it's it sucks to have to pull the cabin off to open it up and go into it. But do you want to pay the so the price for them to make a ship that it would actually, you know, you, you wouldn't have to take do that. So that that's the that's the depending and then and then the bad the other thing is that, you know, if you're new to the Harry Potter Legos, this is not something you're going to want to get. Uh, for me, I have, have really, you know, yeah, well, I have lots of set unless you, you know, if you, if you have never gotten a Harry Potter Lego set before, you're not going to be as interested in this one. Let me say it that way instead. Just because it's not, it's, uh, it doesn't it's have not Harry. It what you would expect. From yeah, Harry. exactly. I mean, okay. you know, for me, I have all the other Harry Potter, you know, sets. So this is just a nice welcome addition that, but yeah, you know, I always look at it when I write a review of this person has never collected a Harry Potter toy in their life. And so if you're going to buy this, if you're going to buy a new Goblet of Fire set, this isn't probably the one I would start with. But I, I mean, it's a great set. It has tons of pieces and it's a, it's a, it took me about 45 minutes to an hour to build. Uh, I'm also a very slow builder. I like to take my time with it too. So I'm sure somebody could build it a lot faster than that. <laughs> Yeah. So, so what's the price point? Uh, the price point at? for this one is this is the most expensive one. This one I think is about $49. Uh, but you can probably find it cheaper in certain places. It's just depending on where you look. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So tell us about, uh, another set that, that now are these sets released yet? The four new ones or any of them? They're not out They're yet, on right? the. Well, the, I I haven't seen them in stores. Uh, Lego says Lego sells them on the uh, LegoShop.com, which you can go and purchase. But I've yet to see them in stores. Uh, I went. I was at Toys R Us a few days ago, and I didn't see them out yet. Uh, I would look for them soon because originally I heard they weren't going to be around till October. But the fact that they're on LegoShop.com means you should probably be seeing them soon. So tell us about the other set the next set harry the, uh, the harry versus <laughs> right precisely I'll, I'll say it for you instead how about that <laughs> okay uh, well you know obviously this is the first task that harry has to go through and so uh, lego tried to make it look like and if as we've seen in the trailer it's like in a little rock quarry almost like area so they've created like these different walls that you can build and you can actually set it up any way you want uh it comes with obviously the horn tail dragon so, were, was there anything you did like about this set? Oh, yeah. I think the sets, this is probably my second favorite set out of the four, because there's only four sets with the, okay. uh, this movie this time. Uh, it's got some great action things. You can put Harry Potter's uh, broom in a little catapult, and when you push down on it, it can go flying. Of course, obviously, you can't oh. get it to fly <laughs> into Harry's hands. Uh, but, and also... Uh, comes with the mad eye moody minifigure well, if you look at the paint job that's done on the on the goblet of fire sets the lego really really put in a lot of good details about this yeah the characters are very detailed oh yeah i, I mean uh, and they've, they've done details before but i think they went out of their way this time to really really give the character uh, uh some good details and you know making it look like the actual character from the film well that's really good compared to you know these you know the regular yellow heads so, mm -hmm. so how much did this one cost? This one is about thirty dollars, and it's well. I mean, I think it's worth it. It's probably, 
if you're gonna be get if you're gonna get into a goblet of fire sets, I would definitely pick this one up as uh, your second choice. With obviously the uh, graveyard one, which we'll be talking about soon, as right. your first choice. Okay. Now tell us tell us about the graveyard scene. Let's let's hear about that one next. You know, graveyard scene. Well, obviously the graveyard scene is the scene that everyone's waiting to see because you know that's when Voldemort finally appears in a I guess his own body. Uh, graveyard duel comes with a great amount of things. First, it comes with uh, a bunch of different cemetery plots, and, and you can seem to open every cemetery plot seems to open. So you can see a skeleton, or some kind of coffin, or uh, even comes with a couple different skeletons that you can just have them hang around the graveyard. I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, it also the it's also surrounded by a fence that you can put together, and you can either make the fence go around the graveyard, or you can encase it into something. Uh, and then of course. Uh, in the back, it's got some other grid details to make it look like a graveyard. It comes with a real spooky tree that's filled of owls and spiders, and then also like a care caretaker's uh, uh, area, so that where you, he has like his broom and and uh, uh, shovel and everything else. But of course, the the biggest part of the set is the Tom Riddle grave. So when you open that up, it actually reveals three different snakes in there, and then you can also have the uh, cauldron. Which, uh, of course, that's where uh, Voldemort appears. Now, what about looking at these pictures? This doesn't look like a set that would take a while to build. How long did this one take you? Actually, this one took a while. Really? It, it, it's yeah, it... it's it's somewhat complicated. Uh, the, the fence, if you look, I mean, it's got every little thing is t- made of tiny, tiny, ton of. Uh, excuse me. Let me say, it. it's made of ton of little pieces, oh, okay. and the uh, it, it, it took a while. I would probably say this is a good hour build, at least for me. I mean, I and again, like I said, I take my time with it. I mean, why rush putting together something? So the best thing about this set is it comes with you know all the different mini figures. It comes with uh, Wormtail, it comes with Harry Potter, and of course Voldemort and. We also we so we kind of get a good look at Voldemort, and now that we've seen the new trailer, we kind of get an idea of kind of what he looks like. Um, but the the coolest minifigure is obviously the Death Eater. So when you take the if you look at the Death Eater's head, it, it has the little mask on it. But if you turn it around and you take the cloak off, it obviously becomes Lucius Malfoy, which is pretty cool. I enjoy this set a lot, and if if you're gonna get a Goblet of Fire set. This is the one that you definitely have to get. Okay, so everyone's next question is, how much does it cost? This one is about $30. Okay, Which is wow. not too bad, specifically if you look at all the little things that you get. Uh, I'm thinking of actually even buying another set so that I can make uh, make it a larger graveyard and make the fence longer and combine that. Oh, of course, I'll have idea. a whole bunch of extra minifigures, but you know, I always look into how I can make this set larger. Yeah. Plus, plus it be, you you saying it's one of the best Harry Potter sets, and then only for thirty bucks. That's definitely yeah. one I'd be interested yeah. in buying. Well, yeah. I mean, if you look at the how the Lego Lego, if you look at how the Lego Potter sets have evolved from the first film to now, they just keep getting better and better. Uh, all right. And last but not least, tell us about the Mer People set. The Mer People set. Yeah, this one's probably the. Uh, one of my least favorites as well, uh, only because. So it is uh, least. <laughs> well, one of them. I, I got. I. I. The Durmstrom ship is is probably my least favorite, but uh, there's reasons why this one is not one of my favorites. But uh, the Mer People set uh, is the smallest of the of the uh, four. Yeah, I was just gonna say the this set does not look very large or very detailed. No, it's it really isn't. It was, it was kind of a disappointment that they did this one and they left out the uh, the final task, which is the maze. I would have rather have seen that one. I think um, that would have been an interesting it, build. Yeah, the, yeah, I, probably too expensive to build too is why we, yeah. why we don't see it. Uh, but this set, you know, it has a, you know very blue and green colors to make it have this look of being underwater because obviously that's where the task takes place. Uh, it's got some interesting minifigures if you look. Harry, if you look at Harry, the details, they give him the gills, and of course little uh, Lego flippers. And I said in my review that I was not sure whether or not uh, this is the first time Lego has produced uh, fl- Lego flippers for little minifigures. And of course I got a ton of emails the next day telling me I didn't know what I was talking about. So obviously it's not. 
Um, but if you look at the minifigures that it comes with, it comes with Ron and Hermione, and it comes with uh, one of the Mer people, and that's it. And I was a little disappointed because in the in the scene, you know, I already have a Ron and Hermione figure. I don't need any more. And not only that, <laughs> you know, but I remember you saying in your review that Ron and Hermione look exactly the same. Well, except if for the you hair. Look at the, it, <laughs> pretty much yeah i mean and, and it, the faces are a little bit different on these two but if you look at the outfits the outfits are exactly the same so the bodies are exactly the same and it's just different head and different uh hairstyle which is what they usually do um so that i found to be a bit disappointment because they went in all their way you know they lego went out of their way to make some of these really well detailed and designed um, then, of course, it also comes with another Victor Crumb figure, which I already have one from the Durmstrom ship. Of course, this one you has a shark head that you is removable, but the biggest disappointment out of all four of these now that you look at them all is there is no Cedric or Floor little minifigures. Now, the you know the main story well, that's of the, the movie. <laughs> yeah, the main story is you know the triwizard tournament and you get two victor crumbs you get three different harrys in these sets but no cedric or floor so you can't even re- reenact the scenes if you wanted to that's not good so i found th- yeah i found that a little bit disappointing and you know maybe we may we may see more sets from lego uh yeah that was going to be my next question do you yeah s- doubtful but i i i i, I doubt it we'll, we'll see it but you never know uh, but I, th- you know, I, I think I think overall Lego did a very good job on them. Now, did we, did we mention the price about the Mer people? Uh, Mer people was about twenty bucks. Okay, so mm-hmm. it's smallest and the cheapest. All right, so Joe Fulton from MillionairePlayboy.com, aka Lando the Pimp. Thanks Lando for joining us this week. And if there are any more Lego sets or whatever, we'll be you'll be getting a call from us. No, th- no problem. Oh, okay, by the way, guys, um, if you're on the MuggleCast blog and you need to, if you're not sure to subscribe to iTunes, you can click the free iPod book to download from iLounge.com. Dude, Lounge. not a cast goes by where we don't plug this book. I, th- uh-huh. you know. No, but it's a really good book. No, no it, is, it is a great not. book. It's just a really so. good book. We're trying to help the fans because we're still working on our, on our own personal iTunes tutorial. And in the meantime, we want to help the fans have their own, you know, their own way to do it. And you just download this book from iLounge. You can get the link. Click on the link from our downloading blog. Where, where, yeah, that's really good of you guys. That's a very selfless so service. Selfless. Know, definitely, well, listen, but, we you know, care about the visitors. I think so. I think we had to take a page out of your book. Just how selfless and how generous you are to provide links. to Oh, things and by the like way, that. also you can. Um, we've added new, like the blog has also been updated. Has word counts. So when, when we make fun of Eric for talking the most in the shows, it actually um, happened. It, except for episode yeah. five, Jamie pulled ahead of me. I was so happy. Jamie did pull ahead of him. And I don't think I did. No, it's it's my turn to do episode six, so that's why that's Shut not up, Eric. Shut up, pull ahead. Eric, Wait. what are you talking about? What, what are you talking I'll, about, I think it's Eric's turn. Eric, Eric do, do you have something to say? Eric, you're, Eric, you're next. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's enough um, announcements <laughs> and the confab you. <laughs> Let's just get to voicemails, guys. Voicemails. Okay, so, Andrew, roll the voicemails. Hello. I'm Clarissa from California, and I'm 17 years old. I really enjoy listening to MuggleCast. My question is, do you think the potions book that Harry hid in the Room of Requirement will be useful and important to him in the future? If so, how? Thank you. The question was, does that book that Harry, that, yeah, Harry stuck in the Room of Requirement have any significance in Book 7? Well, I think so. It's Snape's book. Well, I, I'm really, I'm really thinking not. I mean, there are too many, there are far too many loose ends for it all to come back to, the 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 Half Blood Prince potions book that he put in the, that he put in the room of requirements. Well, I think oh. it's fairly big. You're you're totally wrong. You're totally wrong. This is this is what it is. She makes this big point to describe oh, this God. like forgotten room. <laughs> so, how can there not be one of the Horcrees in this room? Horcrux? Well, no, there's a yes. cabinet in there. There's like the. I think there might be. There's like a cabinet that's described like the vanishing cabinet in that room. Horcrease. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in there. It, there's a perfect spot to put one of the Horcrease. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, no, in it's in the book. It's in the book as Horcruxes. For plural. Horcruxes is in the book. Horcrux. That's no. That's <laughs> that's her mistake. She's gonna correct it. She named the chapter. Yeah. It's Horcruxes, people. 
when they publish the next uh-huh. version, she's going to correct that. <laughs> no, the next book, Harry Potter and the Horcrux. Next book, Cry, you mean? Anyway. No, it's Creed. I think that, okay. that, that room is me- so, hugely important. I don't know about the book, but the room. Yeah, the, I agree the room is, but I don't, like, that's how the Death Eaters got into the castle in this book, was through the room requirement. So, I really do think the, the actual room itself is important, but I don't know what significance the book will hold, because... You know, the book, the, has the, a lot the of book was sort of. I know, but so it, many good spells in there. But that doesn't matter, though, because we look back to uh, <laughs> book six, and that's what that, that's what the entire book was basically about: was Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. Who was Half Blood Prince? Snape. You no, know, it and, wasn't about and, that, though. Ben, that's my problem with Half Blood Prince. My only really problem with Half Blood Prince was that Snape wasn't in it. I mean, the book's titled after him, and there, we saw one of his lessons and things. I mean, yeah, no, but I think one of the things was it was like a oh, plot. But look at the we're other. We're supposed to, you know, decide. The whole book we're supposed to decide, you know, what we think of Snape and stuff. But he wasn't really in it. Much. But look at the other books. And look that's at a the shame other books. because Sorcerer's Stone. Yes, it's about finding the Sorcerer's Stone, but it's finding a, about it's finding a, it's about a lot more. Chamber of Secrets. It's about you get to the Chamber of Secrets at the end. Yes, but it's it's about it's about. You know Tom Riddle's history, or whatever well, right. Prisoner of Azkaban. The, the the things that are in the title don't always set the set the course for the entire right. book. Well, but they they are well, they yeah, are rather does, mainstream. Though, because you know, for to, example, to a, look, look at the Goblet of Fire. Like it's it's like the center of the entire book. Cup. You know, the, they have this goblet that that spouted out. Harry's I think it's, name. it should have been the Triwizard the Tournament. Then. Then. Dramatic twist. Yeah. Well, it was going I to be, wasn't it? Was, is the Doomspell Tournament or, or whatever? Yeah. So yeah. that was rather you know. But no, I'm saying the Half Blood Prince is less mainstream than I think the other ones yeah, were. I agree with that. But the, um, I, I don't know. But the, we're down to I mean, artifacts now are tremendously important to the rest of the series, right? These horcruxes, horcruxes. Yeah. The horcru- they're Horcre- important. Horcruxes. Did any, have Creed. you guys been getting emails? We've been getting a couple of emails that it says on the Harry Potter site that Filch knows the location of every last artifact at Hogwarts or something. Who says that? Uh, on the on HarryPotter.com. I believe that. And so people are wondering if that's going to be it. important. Put a memory spell on Phil. Why can't Harry just go into the room requirement and be like, room, I require you all the work <laughs> Because they might not be at Hogwarts. It- and then he takes a hammer and yeah. goes, Because boom, it'll boom, say, boom, I'm sorry, I do not recognize the term <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> An error of type 604. Please, so please, <laughs> please re-enter. Yeah. Please try yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> you walk Computer. All all I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't save the muggles. Save the <laughs> computer, please locate <laughs> all Horcrux. Yeah, computer, yeah. find them. <laughs> yeah. I need all of the other things. There's one thing that I really want to talk about with you guys is the the Felix Felicis. Felix like Felicis. The potion, the luck, uh, the good uh, luck potion. Felix Felicis. What yeah. role do you guys think it might play? In? We've we've gotten so many emails, I hope voicemails on this one, and yet we haven't played them because. Uh, I guess we just haven't felt like it. Yeah, but, but I it, think it's it might a, it's be a pretty, serious pretty topic. crucial. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they perhaps saved the lives of the, the trio and other Hogwarts students, the people and the that DA, took it at the, the end of yeah. the DAers at the end of yeah. book six. Yeah, and that's all. You think crap. It's a- Why, John? Why? That's what I said. Here, this is what I said. They substitute continuing the DA, actually learning how to do the stuff. Yeah, let's, let's make a potion. Yeah, you know, I, I agree. Them, I, if they use that again, you know, they that's have a major problem. Yeah. They couldn't have done half that well, stuff things, without without knowing it beforehand. And they wouldn't have... It, luck, right. luck only gets you so far. That's one of the points. And if you take it, if you take Felix Felicis too much, you become reckless. You make mistakes. It's not a perfect potion. It's, it's like not a drug. A it's a drug. It's like a drug. What are you talking about? The stuff that they knew how to do. I mean, like they, they describe one of them. Jumping up and down, bounce around, dodging the curses. Jenny said that the, the spells seem seem to bounce off them, but that doesn't it's, mean that they like actually did stallion. bounce off them. Well, Jenny gets around. Yeah, and it, it doesn't mean that she's throwing them back at him or throwing back any spells of her own. It just means she's well, doing a dance. It could mean that she's <laughs> well, just no. Bit. One of the things I think J.K.R. is aware of it, which was great because in book five at the D.A. where Zachariah Smith or some smartass uh, says to him, you know, we can't. Uh, it's, these spells are stupid, and how are we supposed to, you know, defend ourselves with these stupid little, you know, first-year spells? And you know, I forget the exact line, but Harry says, you know, it saved my life. Yeah, which is cool. Expelliarmus. So, so it's yeah. showing that you know you can def- you can hold up a pretty good fight with you know 
not you don't need to use the unforgivable curses to to put up a decent fight. And yeah, Felix Crucio. Felix, Felix Felice has kind of got. I mean, Harry, I don't think is prepared to even almost touch the magic of the Horcruxes. And you know, he didn't even know anything about what Dumbledore was doing in those weird languages in the books. Well, no. For- for God's sake, the, the dude couldn't even dry off his cloak yeah, after he jumped so... in the water on his own. And I was going to go chase the horse. Yeah, that's the pretty... Horse. I mean, if Dumbledore lost his hand to that... So, yeah, I mean... You couldn't drive... You're talking J- about Harry couldn't dry himself off? Yeah, after they dove in the oh, water yeah. and Dumbledore's like, Oh, God, my bad. I'm sorry. I'll dry you <laughs> off here, you little baby. Here you <laughs> well, no, so I think, yeah, <laughs> to, an extent, to an extent, they're not nearly as prepared as they should be. But it, they've held themselves off pretty well so far, so. <laughs> no. Far too under, under You see, prepared. because whenever, like, I said this, like, I don't know, one episode earlier. Like, whenever Voldemort, like, tries to fix something, he always makes some other mistake, you know? Yeah, and, like, this, like, he doesn't, he never expected Harry to, like, be able to stop him with the <laughs> expelli armis, you know? And so <laughs> the, ne- next time, next time he tries to, um, <laughs> next time he tries to like kill Harry, I have a feeling it'll be something else. Like in the final showdown, it'll be something else that he doesn't see. You know what? We I... all know Harry has to win, but I think it'd be like the ultimate plot twist if Voldemort won and like doomed the EV- Wizarding World. That would just be so sweet. There's a very important question I have to ask you. Oh, you guys. Yeah. Yes. Um, what do you think now? One of the things, one of the ways, I guess, Voldemort would be cool is if, once he were mortal again, if he actually lost his magical power and were, like, a common muggle, that would probably kill him. Made to live as a muggle? Um, but my question is, yeah, but my question is um, the prophecy and J.K.R.'s emphasis on how it only has to happen because they want it to have to happen yeah. or something. What do you think? Because that's a big thing. That really is pushing the... So it, it it's kind of seeming that they really don't have to kill each other Anyway, because if Voldemort and Harry both agree not to make it happen, which Dumbledore says will never happen, but if they do, does that mean that they don't have to kill each other? And what's like the power is given to Harry to vanquish Lord Voldemort? Does that only do they only work if he wants them to? Or you know what's the deal? Because that's well, only... see, okay, like Harry has a destiny, and whenever like when you hear this in other stories, and, like in history and stuff, whenever someone tries to evade their destiny. Like it ends what, up becoming the destiny. destiny yeah, is. Yeah, they end up fulfilling that same yeah, destiny. Yeah, Julius anyway, Caesar anyways. is a good example. Like they're they're told that this is going well, to happen the to them, thing. and they go they go all out of the way to avoid it, and then it still ends up happening. That's that's Macbeth again. And the reason it ended up happening is because they knew oh, well, Macbeth, yeah, what the destiny Caesar. was, and when they're trying to avoid it, they somehow made it happen. So it's it's sort of a circular logic there, but well, yeah, that's that's the whole point. Well, but it. the thing the thing is, um, yeah, if they did walk away. They wouldn't. They wouldn't have to. They wouldn't have to meet each other. But 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 Voldemort is not going to let Harry live because he is a threat. So that's you know that's going to happen. They they, they are going to eventually meet that way. But he says. But this is and this is what I wanted. Um, one of my favorite all time. Harry reacted exactly the way I was starting to react about the whole love thing when he was talking to Dumbledore. When he was like, "Yes, yes, I know. Yeah. I'm uh, love. Yes, big oh, deal." Oh yes. But absolutely. But Dumbledore's answer that. made things just just a bit clearer. He says that he is willing to to wage this fight because he had love for people, because his love for people has incited this this righteous anger and this want for revenge. That righteous anger and that want for revenge is his protection, and it is caused by love. So it's a little twist on, oh, oh, love will save you. But no, love has actually inspired in him the things which will make sure that he doesn't just give up to Voldemort. You know, that's a great, that's a great, great point, Melissa. And exactly. also, if he, if they do both give up, how's Voldemort going to be defeated? So they can't really, can't really do. Yeah, it's that old, you know, it's not in the script. What I thought, I thought that was confusing though. The end of that chapter. I'm sorry, John. You can go. Well, yeah, I mean, we're talking about the love and stuff. The easiest way to kill Voldemort, you know, Harry faces him. He's like, hey, uh, you know, here I am, I'm Harry. And then he brings Jenny along. And just as Voldemort's <laughs> about ready to curse him, Harry and Jenny start it's making out. It's such a out, display of love that he And Voldemort crumbles. starts to melt because he can't, <laughs> he can't witness the love. Can you feel and he starts to melt. the love? And then he, and he's I, like, I like the theory that, he, that he'll just... Exactly. They, they start I like the theory that he'll just be, be evil I overlord know, monologuing King. and Harry will just sort of sneak up behind him and <laughs> kill him. Hey, MuggleCast guys. Uh, really enjoying your show. Particularly like the, the special episode with Melissa. I think she's an adorable young woman and I think it's great that uh, MuggleNet and Leaky have gotten together to do a show. 
Uh, I really like both programs, and I do agree that they, they both serve different audiences, different purposes. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys, uh, MuggleNet had recently reported uh, that Harry Potter lexicon indicated that a well-placed source has confirmed that Regulus Black's middle name was Arcturus. Uh, now, I can't imagine for the life of me who or what would constitute a well-placed source other than Joe Rowling herself, and I, I wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Um, Thanks again, and I'm really enjoying both MuggleCast and PotterCast. Thanks. Bye. Well, first I want to say thank you to that guy for calling me an adorable young woman. That's something that I don't... Oh, yes. I... He's very, very correct. We love you, Melissa. Young. That would be Brian. Ooh, Ben. Ryan? That's it, Ben. That's, that's Ryan, it. I'm not, I'm not saying yes to your next proposal. Proposal? Uh, okay, so let's <laughs> talk about this. Like you said yes to the other I'm just six. kidding. Melissa is adorable and young. Great. Okay, all right. okay let's talk about this. So what do you, <laughs> <what's the question? laughs> um, do you want... HP Lexicon. Melissa's disqualified from this they, because she knows. You're saying they the wouldn't answer. have posted it. They would have put. Yeah, they wouldn't have posted it. HP Lexicon posts Regulus's middle name. The world freaks. They take it down. What happened? Just, Melissa and Ellie. What, what, what was it? Was it Artichoke? It was Artichoke. No, I can't. I, <laughs> I can't. I mean. Arcturus. I think it was Archovy. <laughs> Arc I don't, I don't, Man. I don't know exactly, but I have a, but I have a good idea, and for that reason, I can't. Um, clearly, what? I, I can't cite because it's, it's a matter of respect to Steve. Okay, so, uh, but I can answer yeah, certain yeah. aspects of it, okay. but I'll let you guys speculate first. Is it, a, is it a media source? I can't say. No, shh. Don't, don't ask. Yeah, me. I have no okay. idea, but I've got good speculation. Because no what one, I no one tells me anything. Is obviously they got this from a highly placed source. Highly placed source. So, oh, I can't hear myself when I can hear my own voice. So, I think what happened here was that they got the info from some highly placed source. That's specific. And they spotted it. Someone else spotted it. And they flipped because it hasn't been released by J.K. Rowling. And therefore, they made them take it back well, down. Well, duh. Is that speculation? That's the obvious. Well, yeah. The, 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 that, that, that was some crappy that speculation. That was ridiculous. No. Um, okay. Whatever. Speculation is who the highly placed source is. We know it's a highly placed source. My speculation, and this again is not talking to Steve, and Melissa doesn't tell me anything because she's mean. No nothing. Um, my I I'm assuming that, um, like like the lexicon has confirmed other things as far as genders and things like that. That it's through their translators. And when they have to translate the books for different countries, they have to know certain things, certain names, certain things about characters so they can get uh, the grammar correct and all that other stuff. So if there was ever a reason for some reason to know what the A stood for and the RAB is for the translating purposes, there's a chance that that somehow might have got, got went to them through their other contacts they used to translate the lexicon. That's a good idea. That's as bad as Andrew. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, I just want to adjust what people say when they say, what, how, could it not, how could it be anybody other than J.K. Rowling? It, it can very well be somebody other than J.K. Rowling. Clearly, any, any, any information that's accurate about the books ultimately comes from J.K. Rowling. But a lot of people are now involved in making sure that her books go around the world, um, go into different editions, go to the illustrators, go to – you know what I mean? So different people need to see right, different JKR things. Right, J.K.R. can't do that all herself. Right. Right. But when, but when they put that up and then it just disappears like that and they just yank it off the well, right off the, right someone, off the web, then, then people noticed. then people are pretty sure that it's it's true. Well, obviously, know. someone probably told them to get rid of it. Right. So, because it's not. I, I'm just gonna confirmed. take a stab in the dark here and say that. RAB is pretty much regulus black. Well, no we can go back to the to the interview. You could see in the, in, the, in the transcript. I think I mentioned this in the last, um, or I will mention it in a, in a coming podcast that we've already taped. Um, we in the interview with with Joe, and this is not this is not like talking about it. It's in the transcript. There's a point in which we said something about RAB, and I, without even noticing that I was doing it, answered as if we were talking about regulus, and she didn't correct me. She didn't pause. She didn't think about anybody else we just were going on talking about regulus and yeah. i took i took that as pretty much um yeah pretty much confirmation, confirmation. Or... only because she's very fair about that and she would say uh i didn't quite tell you it was regulus so let's back up 
Hi MuggleCast, this is John Luca from Switzerland, and I've read Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, in English, five times in a row due to the obsession. I've thoroughly enjoyed the entire book, but I was rather surprised while I was reading the part with Dumbledore's death. How come Dumbledore dies so easily with what seemed like no trouble? With such powerful magical powers, shouldn't he be prepared for at least a killing curse? Thanks. Well, I think. Well, I think that we've like yeah, talked about this. Yeah, we have talked past, about this, and, and I think one of the and we've came. We well, we've came to the conclusion that. Well, I think the majority of us have. This this may not be true. Once again, as one of our eleven, thirteen Muggle cast commandments or whatever they are, this may just be speculation. It's that um, Dumbledore knew he was going to die, so he didn't really try to defend himself. That's my theory, and then he knew that Snape's position in the Order of the Phoenix was too crucial to compromise. Even, what are your thoughts? Even for himself. And also one of the things that Jamie said, I believe it was episode three, um, was that maybe perhaps that what blasted him backward was the huge expel or expulsion of, of Dumbledore's power. So that even though he seemed to have died easy, that whole thing that pushed him over the edge was his power, which was a nice way of showing Yeah. It. When I heard him say that, I, I, I remember thinking that was a really, really nice, nice theory. Yeah, Jamie has that kind of touch on things. Mm. It's really nice. I also, um, Steve Van Der Ark made a great point in our latest podcast where he, somebody asked him about this and he said that the reason that he thinks that Snape is Dumbledore's man is because right before that scene, D- Dumbledore is weak and he looks at Harry and says, I'm not worried, I'm with you. So clearly he's depending on Harry. Why do you freeze Harry then? He's not trying to protect him then. He's, he's trying to stop him from interfering because he knows basically what's going to go down. Exactly. Took the words right out of my mouth. Here's my question, though. The task that Draco was supposed to do, I don't, I don't think, uh, I mean, I keep saying I, like I, I'm the only one with these theories. But um, the, the thing he, sh- he was supposed to do couldn't have been to kill Dumbledore. Because no one in their right mind would have assumed that Draco could pull that off. They 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 weren't assuming that Dumbledore was going to go out on this Hor- uh, Korea mission, and um, you, you insist we, on weaken Hor- himself Korea, like that. I know. Yes, yes. Now hold on. No, they didn't assume on any of that. They, they they for all they knew, Dumbledore could be just as powerful as he always is. So why the hell would they put Draco on this ridiculous quest to kill Dumbledore? I I think the quest was just to get the Death Eaters into the castle. That's a reasonable. Quest, and that's also a reasonable right, something but... that Snape could help happen too. That's why Snape says if Draco screws it up, I'll help get the Death Eaters in the castle. Right, but but doesn't make sense that um that it was the the killing of Dumbledore because Draco can't do it but there that's at the, the end. Point. So Snape steps that's right the whole in. point. They didn't. They Through knew. They from. thought that Voldemort was ticked off at Lucius, so he sent his son to die, and that he wasn't supposed to uh, kill. Or what if? And also the whole thing about the Death Eaters in the castle—that was Draco's own improv or something, because he found the way to make it happen with the Vanishing Cabinet. He did that. Snape knew nothing about what it. What if um, Voldemort meant for Snape to do it in the end because he—he he sort of knew that this was happening. He knew there would be an unbreakable vow. He knew that that Snape would have to protect him. What if it was Voldemort's last test of Snape's loyalty? That that so, may be why the impression that, he did that it. Voldemort was aware of the un- unbreakable vow happening in Snape's house. Maybe he just knew that that he would try to protect Draco. And you've all heard, like, the reverse unbreakable ba- vow theory, haven't you? Like, that Dumbledore put Snape oh, under yeah, the unbreakable vow. Yeah, I thought that immediately. To kill him. The only thing I can figure out is who would have bound that unbreakable vow. You, John, you're the only one to think so, of these so, so, theories, good... you know? Everyone just, no, everyone steals them Who bound from the you. unbreakable vow? I mean, I, I fully know. believe that they did have one. Whether the vow was to, but you know what? No, I don't think they did. Uh, because I think Dumbledore doesn't want to rely on magic to trust a person. I think it's it's it, it, that's devaluing somebody's that's... trust, saying I don't trust you fully. So don't you know, do that's a, vow a really nice that you can't do. That's You'll a die really nice personality observation. Right, observation. but but he put he put um he put Snape in a pretty bad position though. So I understand like Snape, you know, it's the moment of truth. If he knows if he doesn't do it, he's gonna die. Then. He might be a little more apt to do it. I don't know, know if Snape cares that much about his life. I think he cared about he cared that Draco was going to die if he didn't do it. Yeah. Oh, that, that's what he was arguing about, I'm sure, with, with Dumbledore. When they had the argument that Hagrid overheard. 
is that I think that there's he's stuck between two unbreakable vows, and that he just says no. He's pr- trying to argue a Dumbledore that is like Snape saying, "I should die. You need to stay, Dumbledore. You're gonna still be around the help." And Dumbledore's like, "No, you know, that's crap. We need you around because you're you're a more benefit to to to, yeah, uh, no, to the order as right. a, as a spy." Now he's on Voldemort's right hand, you know, for this whole thing. Yeah, he killed the totally only one he like ever Flint feared. There. I mean, come on, that's got to be yeah brilliant. So if Dumbledore, if if Snape is worth anything, that Dumbledore thought he was, I think he'll make come around and. I just can't know. get o- okay, sorry. Andrew. Do- I I'm sorry, just I just can't get over that his last his last, his parting shot to Harry is not is is teaching him. He's teaching him still as he's fleeing the grounds as Harry's trying to kill him. He's still teaching yeah. him. He's trying to get him. To he's block trying his to get him to block it. Yeah, and you know what else I. I I I forget. Did what did Snape tell everybody about Harry as they were leaving? Leave him for the did dark. Did he say Lord. no? Like he's Voldemort. He's a he's a dark lord. He's yeah. A dark so Lord's okay. So here he is at his most defenseless. No Dumbledore. If Snape was really the bad guy, why wouldn't it be like, hey, I got two birds with one stone here. I'm just gonna take Harry with me and take him right yeah. to Voldemort. Now one of the things I am. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, a firm believer that Snape does have an unbreakable vow with Dumbledore and stuff and all that crap. But also, um, Snape couldn't have killed Harry there because, according to like the prophecy and stuff, even if he tried, would it have worked? Because you know one's supposed to kill the other. So if Snape went and you know went against Harry, would he just have another scar or what? Would it have worked? I don't know. The, right? The, the, no, I, I, I mean, I like I. I definitely think Snape is a good guy, but that's the question: is would it have worked destiny. anyway? If anybody else tried to kill him, but. Voldemort. I just think it's just not gonna. It's just not gonna work out that way. It's that. It's the Macbeth thing again. The characters just they make it happen that way. Do you know what I mean? Uh. uh. Yeah. Yeah. It's very confusing. I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. So I think that this wraps up episode seven of Mugglecast. I'd like to thank Melissa and John for joining us from Leaky Cauldron. Maybe sometime they'll return the favor and have some of us I think on there. We definitely want to. That'll be plenty of fun. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, Horcree um, yeah, and Horcree Sai. If you guys want to chat John about calling at the Horcree, go ahead and email him. I'm all hey, for it. I'm all for around. that. What's, what's the email, John? John. It is... It's... What? John what? at the Leaky Cauldron dot org? Oh, yeah, that one. John, John at the Leaky Cauldron dot org. Yeah, but people, when you say the, it like that, people don't do the dash. dash. John at the, the dash leaky, leaky dash. Hey, if you people Cauldron don't know the proper address no. to Leaky Cauldron, then I don't want to hear from you. Google it. Oh. <laughs> Google the yeah. word leaky. You'll get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, please visit MuggleCast.com or MuggleNet.com slash MuggleCast, where you can view all of our contact information, send us a feedback email from the form we have there. Something Pottercast doesn't have. Um. <laughs> Something Pottercast doesn't have. Oh, oh, I have one more thing. I have one last thing. Yeah. I just remembered. Someone drew us some fan art. Remember how I said in episode seven, six that um, how we all gather around my desk? Yes. And, uh, well, we do. We're right the there now. Guess like we are right now. Yeah. Ben, I mean, Eric, you have such nice hair today. Hey, what? Why, thank we you. Just, we anyway. got one as well, by the way. We just got a fan art. It's really cute. Wait. Yeah, they have me hiding okay. behind a monitor with the, H, the best. Uh, okay. HBP for uh, for dummies on top of the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> HBP for dummies. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, wait, I'm not done yet. Uh, wait, Andrew, okay, go. Okay. So you're killing me. So this person, this, this person drew us drew a picture of all six of us or five of us. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> around my desk. That's yeah. awesome. And you're telling me I have nice yeah. hair. Yeah, because you're sitting right next to That's me. That's so cool. Right now. Uh, I just punched you. Yeah, it hurt, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Are you gonna say that enough? Enough with you, Bozo. All right. Are, are you gonna say like? Okay. So you're gonna call like yourself said, everybody's once, favorite Okay, Eric. Again. That's enough. Guys, Wait, Ben. Guys, ben. guys, 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 guys. No. Guys, no. guys, guys, enough. guys, guys. Okay. No. <laughs> Okay. I'm talking to you, Ben. Oh, so, ben, so ben, if ben, you go ben, to ben, 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 ben. Eric, stop. Remember what I said about live to tape? <laughs> uh, <laughs>
Okay. Hey, just the, 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 you're, you're just. Well, now that we've established that, we all remember. <laughs> well. Okay. Um. This is Andrew. This is nearly as bad as past episodes. So, don't even. Computer, please locate all or cry. Term not found. But, but, John Noe said it. Want to start saving money and energy at home? Eversource, proud sponsor of Energize Connecticut, is here to help with our in-home energy service. For just $50, our certified technicians will give you a unique home energy score and conduct on-the-spot services. Plus, you'll get rebates and incentives on efficiency upgrades, like improved insulation to stay comfortable and save money all year round. So don't wait. Go to Eversource.com to get started today. Paid for by a charge on customer energy bills.